Minister, are you aware that your order is going to create a social and job crisis? Well, as I said in my remarks, we adopted a similar approach as the Conservative government did in 2013 for an emergency order. I'm sorry, but how many jobs will be lost? How many jobs will be lost due to this order? It is what I was trying to say as I answered your question. We have just completed the consultation with all of the stakeholders on the social economic issues as well with respect to the protection of the caribou. We, Mr. Martel? Well, I was asking for an answer. I want to know how many jobs will be killed due to this order. The minister has heard the question. I would ask that we give him an opportunity to respond. Minister, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. We are currently analyzing, and that's what we'll be doing next few weeks, all of the briefs and testimony that was submitted as part of the consultations in order to develop the order. The order has not yet been developed. That is what we'll be doing over the next few weeks. So you're asking me to answer a question, whereas we're still currently developing this order. Minister, I'm simply trying to know what how many jobs will be cut due to your order? Your department conducted the analysis, but the department says at the minimum, there are 1,400 jobs that will be lost. Some $900 million of economic impacts. So what is your response to that? That is 1,400 jobs at the minimum, thanks to your order. As you know, this analysis is based on preliminary data since the final order has not yet been adopted. These are estimates. It may greatly vary depending on the final order. Minister, what are you going to say to these people? That's 1,400 jobs that will be lost. What will you tell these people who have families, who have houses in their communities, who are going to be losing their jobs? What are they to do afterwards? Uh, that is, you will endanger these communities. What is your response to them? Well, as you know, I come from a small city in Quebec, which is called La Tuc which has been living from a forestry for a long time. There's a pulp and paper uh, plant and there are sawmills. I understand this reality very well. And this really upsets me that your party has absolutely no understanding of the adequation between the state of a forest and the state of an industry such as the forest sector. Because we haven't taken care of our forests in the city of La Duc, we have some several hundred jobs left in the plant. Why is that? Because uh, the state of the forest has deteriorated. Minister, I've met with the workers. I met with the companies. They're extremely worried. They do not know what is going to happen tomorrow. These are jobs. They're very happy to stay in their communities. They bought houses. They don't know if they're going to have to move tomorrow. They don't know what they're going to do. So what I want to know is this. Do you have a plan for these workers? Because if your order is uh, tabled, uh, then jobs will be used. I have also met with the workers. I met with unions. I went to Latuc two weeks ago. I was in the Lac Saint-Jean region as well. I went to Shibugamu. I sat down and I met with representatives from the companies as well. There is something that could ensure that the federal order does not go forward. That is, if the federal, uh, that is the provincial government, the Quebec government tables what it was supposed to table. If they do that, then we don't have to need to move ahead. I don't know why you're always speaking about Quebec. What has Canada, what have the Liberals done since 2015? What have you done for the forest sector? What exactly have you done? The lumber agreement has not yet been settled and we've been speaking about it for years. I've been here for six years and every time we're speaking about the lumber agreement. So what have you done for the workers and the forest companies today to ensure their prosperity? What have you done? Chair, I thought that I was here to testify about caribou. I think that we're moving away from the subject. If my colleague could cite some data. Mr. Martel, a moment, please. Please continue. 
If Mr. Martel would like to obtain further information as to what other departments have done for the forest sector, we can certainly provide that information to the uh, committee. I'm Minister of the Environment. I'm not Minister of uh, Development of uh, Economic Development. Yes, uh, there has been research conducted in my own writing on the uh, forest sector and the new pro forest products available. Uh, they recently received a subsidy, but Mr. Martel, please go ahead. So there will be a serious impact that will derive from your order. The workers are worried. What are you going to tell to Eric, Jean-Marc, to Mathieu and the Girard, the Tremblay families who work in the forest sector? What are you going to say to them if they lose their jobs due to your order? What are you going to say to them? You no doubt know that all of the experts, the unions, indigenous communities and environmentalists the workers say that the very future of their sector is tied to the health of the forest. Uh, the Conservative Party does not seem to grasp that. All other stakeholders understand that. You cannot have a sustainable forest sector if the state of our forest continues to deteriorate. You're the only ones who don't understand this. Well, what are you going to do with these 1,400 jobs that will be lost at the very minimum? What will you do with these people? Are human beings taken into account in this? What do you do to them? The mayor of the city, have you met with her, of the community, when she says that her uh, village will no doubt become a ghost town? What are you going to say to her? Mr. Martel? Quickly, uh, Minister, I'm afraid time is up. I've given you some additional minutes. There were many questions in one. When it comes to social economic impacts, yes, of course, we're aware. So, as you may have noted, I'm quite emotional when I talk about workers because I met with them. I went into the region and there's distress. You can see in their eyes. They love the forest. They love their work. They are people who right now are very anxious or troubled and they don't know what's going to happen. Minister, I would like to know, have you met with the mayor of Sacre Coeur? Did you go to see her? Oh, you're talking to me about the workers. I met with them a number of times again recently. I have had meetings with union workers from a number of companies and sectors of the forestry. I did not meet with the mayor. That was my question. But the mayor stated something that I consider very important, and I'm from the region. The forestry sector for that region is huge. And the mayor very clearly stated that if you impose the order, it's going to make a ghost town of Sacre Coeur. And I would say, my gosh, the minister, I cannot believe that he's insensitive to that and that he didn't go to meet with her. What could you tell that woman? She was, the mayor was completely um, speechless. She couldn't understand for the workers or what you could say to that mayor. It's curious because that's not the message that the workers gave me when I met with them. The workers, Minister, what workers did you meet? Did you meet the workers from Waisako? We met workers from a number of companies uh, in Shibugamo. I met some there. I met some in Lac Saint Jean and others virtually also. And those people understand that the future of their jobs and the future of the forestry sector depends on the health of the forest. What you and your colleagues in the Conservative Party seem not to understand or not to want to understand, I, I'm not sure which exactly. Minister, you're talking about the impacts of the order, although it's not written yet. We've done a preliminary analysis on a certain basis that is preliminary. But before we, I know that you like fear campaigns. That's your house brand. I understand that. But the reality is that we are doing, taking into account all the impacts including the socioeconomic impacts of the decision we make. It's an obligation, Minister. Here we're talking about the order, okay? You're not able to guarantee to us that the population, with your order, that the population of the caribou will increase or that you'll be able to save them when we know that your order is going to kill off jobs that we're sure of. We're certain that it will kill jobs. And on the other hand, you are not able to guarantee to me that the caribou population will increase. But to me, 
it's uh, senseless. It doesn't make sense. Those, those people who you said that bought homes, that are going to lose their jobs, and they only do that, and those it's generation to generation, I uh, said to myself, the minister cannot be insensitive to that. Of course not. What I'm really surprised by is that you and your party, whether it's on the issue of caribou and conservation, and the impact on uh, with plastic pollution and uh, climate change, you're, uh, you play the ostrich. So you say you have no solutions, let's sacrifice the caribou. You have the condition that forests can go down, we don't care. Mr. Gibbo, that's not true. And before I pass on the microphone, you cannot guarantee then that if you impose your order, that the caribou population will increase or that you'll save them. You cannot guarantee that. Are you able to guarantee that? I said earlier to your colleague that we were able in Canada to restore caribou populations by working together. We can do that, and we have done it in the past in the country. I'll pass on the microphone. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Minister Gabo, in your opening remarks, you mentioned the carbon tax. Will you move the carbon tax from home heating for all Canadians this winter? You're mistaken. I talked about carbon uh, payments in Quebec, which uses a form of uh, cap and trade, which is different from the federal system. I was talking about the provincial system. I can certainly reread the passage. It was it was really delayed, so I okay, didn't even okay, hear the okay, first okay, part. Okay, okay, I'll give you a few more seconds. But uh, I, I also, I, I get, like I said to Mr. Boulris, I mean, we're really here to talk about the caribou, not the yes, price on carbon. I know sure. you can link it somehow, but, but go, ahead, go ahead. You mentioned go ahead. it. Go I just ahead. want a simple answer. Will you remove home heating carbon ta carbon tax from home heating bills? this winter for for Don't. all Canadians, all Canadians. Donc vous avez fait référence à... So you referred to my speech, and in my speech, I mentioned the Quebec government. We often congratulate them for their environmental leadership, including the carbon fees, but we're talking about the Quebec government's cap and trade system that is completely different from what is done elsewhere in the country. Thank you, Ms. Chatel. Thank you. 